just do that on time. All right, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Father, we give you glory. Okay, all right, let's see. Hallelujah. Thank you once again for joining us in this special corpus program. It's a special event of Pijosh special. Hallelujah. And today is the day one. Hallelujah. We give God praise. We bless his holy name. Before we start in today's discussion, let's just pray. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, once again, we give you thanks. Thank you, ancient of this, because faithful is he that have started this good work. You also complete it. Thank you, yeah. Father, for the gift of life. Thank Jesus. that for strength, for yeah. grace. Thank you, ancient of this, O oh Lord, for everything. Thank we you. have come to say thank you. Amen. Receive all the glory, receive all the honor. As we have to start, O oh Lord, Spirit of the living God, thank that for your presence that is already in our midst this today. Thank all glory you, be to your name. Thank you, Father. All glory be to your holy name. Receive all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you once again for joining us. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Is it like good midnight? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Today with me today is uh, my humble friend. He's very, very humble. Hallelujah is my friend. Hallelujah. Amen. And he's also my husband. Glory be to Jesus. We'll be sharing together for our 10 years marriage anniversary. That's has been God all the way. Hallelujah. Amen. Just like yesterday. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to sit back. I want you to relax. I want you to be expectant and I, and I want you just to sit comfortably wherever you are watching us because in sharing our life with you your life is going to be blessed and you are going to bring out you are going to have if just a little lesson from today's discussion and it's going to be an awesome way hallelujah mm -hmm. hallelujah glory to jesus so tonight we'll be sharing over to you tell me <laughs> to the, um, that camera. all right sir all right yeah all right um good evening everyone good morning good night um good waking up good sleeping whatever it is you're doing um, it's a privilege to come again this day to share with you um, to get us corpus about how the journey has been for us so far and to also use this opportunity to you know um, you know for you to leverage on our you know our strengths our challenges you know our testimony of God's faithfulness we're just discussing on what it takes to, you know, be in marriage, you know, how to, how, what do you do? How do you get into marriage? Yeah. What's the significance? What's the importance of being married? Yeah. And also, um, you know, so many things coming up. We've got several sections, I, I mean, booked down with different couples um, to share their experiences, their personal yeah. testimonies, yeah. Um, you know, their relationship in the midst of crisis, how they strengthen their love, mm -hmm. you know, divorce, deaths, you know, how do you raise a child in the 21st nature century? Or nature. You know, <laughs> nature or nature, you know, infidelity, is it a natural thing or is it something you develop? Oh my God. So there's so much to look out for. Yeah. And today being the first um, section, we're not doing anything very, very, you know, um, complicated we're just discussing yeah and we'll just take it from where we you know wherever we, we take it from you know just to discuss so i think what we just start with is to look at um relationship in itself what's what's what is it what is it about mm. in the sense that relationship do you want me to do all the talking no 
<laughs> at some point, I'm going to come in. <laughs> All right. So it's important for us to know that relationship is not an human design. Hmm. A lot of times, people have tried to borrow their relationship ideas from, you know, intellectual people, celebrities. They want to pattern their life around, you know, people that are very famous, mm. you know, celebrities, you know, popular people. But again, it doesn't matter how rich a person is, how popular a person is. It is not a guarantee of a successful relationship that they will end up having a successful relationship. You know, recently we've had people who of different levels in life, mm. you know, messed up their relationship in less than a year or two. Some of them within five years, everything is scattered. But again, it's just to say that relationship is not an human idea. Yeah, It's not something you can intellectually, you know, determined to say, mm. well, I mean, because this person is a professor of science or philosophy or professor of law, he definitely will have mastery over a relationship. It doesn't work like that. Mm. You know, so relationship, first and foremost, you must understand is it's God's idea. It's, um, it's God's idea. Mm. So maybe you want to discuss more about that. What exactly is, you know, this yes, issue of God's idea? What do you mean by what do we, how do we go? Yes, thank you, Tammy. Like um, my husband has rightly said, relationship is God's idea. God is the originator of relationship. We can also see it from uh, in the life of Adam and Eve. God has a relationship with Adam. And it's not just only that God only created Adam alone, but he relates with him. That shows how powerful relationship is. Relate. It comes from the word relation, relationship, relationship. Two people coming together <clears throat> to have something in common, to have a purpose, to have an idea, to have a vision where they are going to or where they are heading to. You know, again, it's also to look at the fact that when God created Adam, mm. You know, God could have created Adam as a workaholic. He could have just created him to become, you know, a workaholic, just take care of the animals, take care of the garden. <clears throat> you know, God could have used Adam for his own purpose. Mm -hmm. Adam would have still been relevant in God's plan. Mm -hmm. But God thought about Adam and yeah. said that this man, even though he will fulfill his destiny without you know, with all the things he has been committed, that has been committed into his hands, mm. but still he needs someone he can relate with, someone who he can talk to, someone whom he can fellowship with, someone who is like himself, mm. someone he can relate you know, with. share his ex you know, they can share together, someone mm. he can uh, that can be his companion. So that was the that was the inspiration that batted, you know, the coming of Eve. That was what led to God creating Eve. Mm. Eve was created essentially to support, to relate, as to so, you know, to, as an helpmate for Adam. So it's God's idea. And that's one thing you must settle in your mind, that as you begin to think about relationship, you cannot absorb yourself from the fact that if God is the <clears> one <throat> who initiated it, mm. He's the one who's got the best way to run in it. Yeah, it's just like uh, a production of a car. The manufacturer will definitely know more than even the person that is even driving the car. Definitely. Yeah, so God is the creator, is the originator of relationships. So our father knows more beyond what we can even imagine because it was it was God's idea. And for us to succeed in that relationship, we have to involve God. We can't. We can't yeah. do without Him. We can't do without Him. So that's um, him. so that's the fact, and that's that's that must settle in your heart, you know, from the start. So how do you begin your relationship journey? How do you begin, you know, a journey into su a successful relationship? It begins with, I think, your personal relationship with God. Yeah. You know, relationship begins, and you know, no matter how you drum it into some people, they will still believe that you know you're just sounding religious. 
you're just trying to be, you know, um, religious about this. No, it's not being religious. See, if you've tried many things and it doesn't work, why, why don't you just try what works? You know, I said some couple of days ago, weeks on Facebook or wherever, I said, if you have tried foolishness so far and it's not worked, why don't you try wisdom? You know, you've <laughs> tried your way. You've gone into all sorts of relationships and it has not like worked. You keep on doing the same thing you know? and you're expecting a different yeah, result. Yeah, you keep on doing the same thing and you expect a different result. It's going to look like it's just, you're just changing people, but you are still in the same setting. You're still in the same environment. You're still in the same mindset. It's not going to change. Mm. Even if you change the person, Oh, I don't, that guy has got a problem. That lady has got a problem. You know, it's the fault of this lady. You may find 25 million errors in one person Mm. and you can identify that as a root cause of the relationship breakdown, but it is still not the reason why the relationship broke down. Yeah. Because even the marriages that have worked, including our marriages, our marriage, which is, you know, 10 years this year, it's not because we have... We are, we are perfect individuals mm. who has got no flaws or errors, you know. And if God had not been, you know, if it was not for God, I'm telling you, there will be many things you can look at in your, your partner, your wife, and say, you know what, well, you've done this, you've done this, you've done that, you've done that, and your husband, and say, you know, you are this, you are this, you are that, and all that. And then that could result into, but it is God who holds that relationship. Mm. So you must try wisdom, and wisdom is God. How do you begin? You go back to him. You ask him for wisdom. Mm. The Bible says that through wisdom, a house is built. Everything that requires building must begin with God. You cannot successfully build without building with God. Mm. Through wisdom, a house is built. And God himself is the author of wisdom. So wisdom is not just common sense. Common sense is you have somebody who you have a likes, like, um, I mean, attraction, <laughs> you know, you feel you have to go towards that direction, you know, you feel towards this person, you have mutual feelings, so go in that direction. That's common sense. That's how you feel. That's your sense. That's your sense is speaking to you. Mm. But wisdom demands that you, you know, build with God. Every building that has lasted, every relationship that has lasted, I'm telling you, every relationship that has lasted such far, you know, no matter how it is, go and check it behind that relationship is a principle of wisdom is a foundation of wisdom all right okay. sir. yeah uh like timmy has already said um the building which is god is very very important in building up anything relationship can be it in marriage in courtship or even friendship and if god is involved the foundation matters a lot the foundation matters a lot. For a building to last, for a building structure to outshine everything, the foundation which the the building itself is going to sit upon matters a lot. Even and God, is, God, God himself, himself is, is, is the, the foundation. Builder, yeah. Is the foundation, yeah. It's the builder, which is very, very important. So that's it. So... That must set in your heart that God is the builder of all things. Mm. See, um, the Bible says somewhere, it said that, you know, a, a watchman, I said God watches over a city. Mm. Those that watch it, watch in vain. Except said yeah. God does what again? So build the, 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 think build the house, the builder builds it builds in, in vain. vain. See, you can, you can gather blocks, mm. but it takes God to, you know, uh, you know, to give make that building a successful. So your relationship is a building, mm. and what, regardless where you start from, I think that building begins with you. Particularly, it begins with you. You know, we always look at somewhere else. We always look at some other people. You know, you must. You are the first factor in that relationship. Yeah. You know, either as the man or as the woman, the relationship begins with you. Be the right person. You know. And that's why I said you must begin with God because the goal and the, the, the purpose of that relationship with God, one of the things I would say you benefit from, you know, having God as your personal Lord and Savior and, you know, learning to walk with him is that it changes you into himself. He adds value to your life. He helps you in your weaknesses, you know, you also sustain, you know, there are many things that could go on and on and on, but the essential truth is that God 
A relationship with God does not leave you the same way. Mm-hmm. So that relationship with God makes you the kind of person that, you know, fits into another life, that helps you, you know, you know it, it makes you the right person. That's what I'm trying to say. It makes you the right person, you know. And you, it doesn't matter where you are. And I used to be very, very timid. I used to be very, very shy, even though, you know, I used to be very, very, you know, I used to gallivant and all that. Deep down in me, I was a very shy person. I used to be very timid, even though I always showed the, you know, the strong fronts before then, until I gave my life to Christ. You know, I was always somebody else for somebody else, like trying to be something else, mm-hmm. you know, trying to be somebody else. You know, you're not yourself. That's who I was. And then I gave my life to Christ. And I realized that it was not just about me finding the right person. It's about me becoming the right person. Yeah. You know, and then it impacts on your character. Mm. It, it, it impacts on your, you know, your, 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 your interests. It also impacts on your, your choices, your appetite, your mm. demands, mm. your expectations. You know, and then your actions, your actions, your everything you do. So people there, are, you, you may sit down here and they say ten ways to be to do this, twenty five ways to find the right person. You may have all sorts of things, but let me be honest with you, all those things would not work without the foundation of wisdom. And God is that wisdom. Just yeah. before you say, I wanted to add something. You know, I was reading someone in the Bible recently, and it says that God gave the law. The law in itself was not a sin, but our human flesh was too weak to allow the law to fulfill its purpose. So even though the law was good, but our flesh was weak, and what does that really mean? It meant that even if the law says the only way to please God is that you must, you must not look at a lady lustfully, mm. or you must not commit adultery. That's what the law says, you must not commit adultery. And anyone who can maintain that would please God. The fact is that even though that is what will make you live a life that is pleasing to God, the human flesh cannot keep it. So the law was good, but our human nature was not able to keep the law. So there are many good things in the principles that people share with you, 25 things, three things, five, four things, and all those things are good. But until you are the right person, until your life is built with in with the materials of God, until you until you have a personal relationship with God, those things would not be effective in your life. So yeah. the only way you can be effective in your in your in anything you decide to do, just like you say, you have a New Year resolution. People have planned New Year resolutions, and before the February, everything is scattered. <laughs> the, the resolution is already. How many of you still remember the resolution you had in January? It's all it's already in the bin. <laughs> because you may have a good intention, but it takes more than having a good intention to have the intentions fulfilled. It takes a force, a, a supernatural help, and that's where God comes in. All right. Yeah, you are very right, Temi. It's just, just can you just imagine it for someone to build a house without putting the foundation no. and expect the house to stand? Yeah, it's another type of house. <laughs> <laughs> because storms will come. <laughs> storms will come, challenges will come. It's not something that uh, you, 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 you want to pray against, that you wish it to not happen. It's going to come. When the storm comes, what is the right foundation you want to use as, as your shield, as your defense, so that the house will not collapse? In every building that we can see today, in every edifice that we can see today, the foundation, there's a deeper, deeper work on the foundation. And which is God Himself. When God is involved in a thing, even when the storm comes, when the storm rises up, or anything, any challenges of life that we can think of, that strength, like my husband has said, the strength to to give you strength to face such, such challenges. All right. So that's <laughs> that's it. Now let's um, draw it back to. Um, an experience. I mean, before marriage. What did as a single person? Let's mm. let's bring back to the single life now. Was as a single person. Yeah. You know, recently I was. I mean, which is common in, with many people. I was listening to someone, a lady was saying, you know, I've been married my um, partner for is it um, twenty years, and we've not yet. You know, we don't we don't marry. We don't intend to marry. I don't. We don't believe in it, and all that. And that's from a conversation caught my attention. 
And I gave her three reasons why you must get married. Number one, and, and I'm speaking now to young people, to singles, mm. um, because one of the challenges you face is the temptation to do it quick. Mm. But it is important to do it right. Mm. There are many things that we do that are quick. They give you the result on time, but it doesn't last. And many times, like uh, my wife has said, when the storms come, the foundation that you have, that you have, uh, you you know, you didn't do, or the foundation you did not lay, mm. you cannot build on. You can't can't sustain you. So if you decide that, well, I'm not going to get married. I want to save costs, or for whatever reason, you know, we just want to move in with ourselves and all that. And you move into that relationship, you know. Number one, you've not laid any foundation for that relationship, which is marriage. It doesn't matter how many years you've been together, you're not married. Yeah. So when certain challenges happen or come, the only thing that will sustain that relationship is that it has a solid foundation. Mm. And one of the foundation is the foundation of marriage, being legally married. But when that is not there, some relationship starts to pull apart. So I will try to use that to buttress on what I was going to say. So when she said that, I said, number one, three things you must, at least among other things, three reasons why you must get married. Number one, for posterity. And I said that to say that, you know, it is for the sake of the legacy you're going to be leaving behind mm. for your children. Your children would have to, they will, one way or the other, know that you're not, you didn't get married. You know, you need to leave the right legacy for your children, for your posterity, for your, you know, generation. You need to have that. Even for who does, even looking on looking onto upon you. To you. Yeah. So it's not just about yourself. You need to do it. It's very, very important. So for that, for, it's a legacy. You've made a statement mm. with officially declaring your relationship. You have officially declared it. Mm. Number two reason is because I said it's a public testimony of that relationship. Mm. It's a different thing when you guys are just together in the room and you live, now you have made your relationship public. You have declared it publicly. You've mm. you've announced to the world that I am no longer yours or is or as I am now is and are. So it is now a declaration to the world that you know what I've given myself to this lady. I'm for her and she's for me. That's a public testimony. Yeah. Number three for the legality of it, for the legal side of it. Because when you get married formally, mm. you get an official document from the government of your state, of your country, that validates that relationship, that approves of that relationship, that makes that relationship valid in any part of the world where such documents are recognized. Yeah. Nobody recognizes courtship document. There's some document called, there's some <laughs> way called they have courtship document. There may be agreements you've had that may be legal, there may be agreements, but it is not marriage. Mm. They will never put it in the class of marriage. They may say marriage and civil civil partners, it may be civil partners, but you're not married. It's a different thing entirely. So marriage is the highest form of human relationship because that's where you have all the dimensions of relationship, intimacy, you know, and the likes of them. So for young people, let it not cross your mind. Let it not even be part of your consideration that you really want to just go into a relationship without needing to get married. You just want to go into it. Let it not be part of your consideration. Let it be part of your desire to get married. And there are many, there are other things I was going to have to read apart from those three things is the fact that, you know, it's an honor to your parents it's an honor to your parents that you have officially let their their house or their control or their jurisdiction, and you have been officially handed over to someone who will take it over from there. So it's an honor to them that from where they have stopped, yeah. someone else is going to continue from there. Mm. So again, if you're not officially, your parents may know the guy, they may know the lady, mm. but deep down in their heart, they will have loved it that they were the ones who officially approve of that relationship with all those other factors we talked about. So that's very, very important, okay? Yeah. It's very, I just want to read um, 
a portion in the Bible. That is Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14, verse 28 to 30. It says, For which of you, intending to build a tower, seated not down first, and counted the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it, least happily, after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it began to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. When I was just ruminating over this, what came to my mind is that you don't need to watch. Don't say because people are doing it. Um, um, or my colleagues, my friends, they are into it. Age is not on my side. Let me quickly adjust myself. Let me quickly do it sharp, sharp. Let me quickly follow this, this shortcut. Even most people that I say I'm, I'm, I'm taking shortcut, that shortcut at the end of it is a longer cut, yeah. is a long, long, longer road. Yeah. So don't There's rush no into it. Life. Take your time. That passage that we read, you want to build this tower, you want to go into this marriage, take your time. Because it's for it's for it's for life. It's not something that you can just wake up suddenly in the morning and say, "Okay, I'm going to marry." And suddenly the next day you wake up and say, "No, I want to come out from it." That is the Bible said that we should sit down, think deeply. Am I really ready for this? Don't rush. Don't be. Don't let people put pressure on you that you must do it. Don't let family. Don't let your your friends. Your friends will have gotten married. Your own time is going to come. So don't rush into it. Don't be in a hurry to do it, to do it quick, 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 quick. And just take your time. Meditate on it. This, this journey I'm, I'm about to embark on, what must I do? And that is where, that is how we can't, we can't remove God from that's very very important from the from 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 the foundation of our life because that is where our life began when we give god a, a place in our hearts the holy spirit of god going to guide us it will tell us what we need to do which is very very important okay yes so that's very very important um you know take your time it's not a sprint it's a, it's 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 like a marathon don't don't be motivated by wedding. Don't yeah. go into a relationship because you want to do wedding. Mm. You know, people think, oh, my friends, I uh, want they imagine the kind of clothes they're gonna put on. You know, they, they are more of concerned about the ceremony side, the ceremonial side of it mm. than the real experience of it itself, the real experience of marriage. There's a difference between being wedded and being married. Mm. Wedding is a ceremony you conduct to publicly declare your relationship to the world. Depending on how much you have, you can invite many more people and let them know about it. Yeah. Marriage is the union between yourself and the person awesome. you have chosen to marry. Yeah. So it must start with knowing the person, being friends, you know, fellowshipping together. If you don't have a relationship with the person mm. and you just want to do the ceremony just because everybody wants, you just want, you just want to look like you want to have a picture of it and all that. <laughs> just to show At the end it. of the day, when the when the ceremony is over, everybody will go you to will their not house. be everybody goes to their house <laughs> and the person you have gotten yourself hooked up with, you're gonna be stuck. Do you want to spend the rest of your life with this kind of a person? Do you want, yeah. what are we gonna be doing together? You don't have the same values. You don't have the same, uh, you know, you don't, you're not friends. You're not, mm -hmm. you know, so you're not going to be in it for two years. You're going to be in it for the rest of your life yeah. till death do you part. And that's how you find people in relationship where they are being abused mm -hmm. because, you know. I think there's a, there's a topic. There's a topic. Yeah, there's so much. All yeah. these things we're talking about now, we're still going to bring it into different sections. Yeah. And so we're going to have people talking about them by the yeah. grace of God. By God's so grace. just to paraphrase that, you know, yeah. people get into a relationship and then they get to abuse the person. They get abused. You know, they start to mess around because in the first place, the relationship was not between themselves and that person. It was between themselves and the world. Mm. They wanted to use that person as an evidence of the fact that they too can marry mm. or to do ceremony. <laughs> and then after the ceremony is over, to they, prove a point. To prove a point. 
you know, <laughs> after the ceremony is over now, they are planning the wedding, but they're not planning their marriage. Yeah. And that's where people make a mistake. They're planning their wedding, but they're not planning their marriage. Mm. Your marriage is the most important thing, even more important than your wedding. Mm. Your wedding is a day event or two yeah. or three, whatever amount of money you want to spend. But your marriage is a lifetime. Now, for example, this is our 10th year marriage anniversary. 10th year. You know, it looks very, very... Some people think it's just... I mean, turn with one person, stop with one person. <laughs> for life. <laughs> for life. Imagine if you're, gotten, if you're stuck with one person for two years. You're already in the same room or you're bored. You're already feeling, you know, you are looking for where to go. I could be in the house with my wife all day. In fact, today we've not been there. We've not gone anywhere. We've just been at home. I enjoy her company. She enjoys my company. It doesn't mean that, you know, um, we just have to be... You know, we, everybody just... Find, we, it's like it's it's like a rhythm. You you just fit into yourself, and yeah. you know you play together. When it's time to play, when it's time to walk, you walk. When it's time to get busy, we get busy. When it's time to scold ourselves, we scold ourselves mm -hmm. again. So, ourselves in love, and that's the way it is. You know, is you're going to be in for long longer than you imagine. Mm -hmm. You know, the person may, you may say the Bible says that when a person dies, you're free to marry. The person may not die young. <laughs> and the, the funniest thing, those people that used to say that they used to live a very long <laughs> so the person longer may not years. Be thinking that this person will say, go, he may not go anywhere. The lady may not go anywhere. The man may not go anywhere. I said, you want to commit murder. You have to kill yourself or to kill them. Oh so the only thing, and, and that's what pushes people into into temptations of different of sorts. Yeah. Because they are already in a relationship that they are not enjoying and mm. they are not, it's not the will of God for them. And then they start to look outside. So that's where the problem starts. And so if you can solve the problem before you go into it, you will not be solving that problem when you get into it. Very, very important. Yeah. Some people try to use a marriage to get a child. Mm. Well, I just want to have a child. I love children. You love children, but you must love your wife too. You must love your husband too. Mm -hmm. Some people think that oh, I just they, I, I just love children. And the only way they want to have a child is that they know it can has to be through a man or a woman. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to commit immorality or they don't want to commit um, um adult, whatever. They say, let me marry. Mm -hmm. But the reason behind their marriage is because they want a child, maybe for themselves, for their for their parents. At the end of the day, you realize that it is not just about the child, it's about the person too. Yeah. So very, very important. Yeah. So that's a factor you must consider, you know, as you go into a relationship. Another thing we're going to buttress upon, you know, in Proverbs chapter um, 18. 18, verse 22. You want to read that for us quickly? Okay. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Okay. So, no, no, this is not a preaching now, but it's important to understand what the Bible was saying. Now, the Bible says he who finds a wife, and I want to speak as a man, because at the end of the day, it is the man who looks for the woman. And, you mm -hmm. know, compared to what we have today, that people, ladies are now the ones who are under pressure because to look for a man. Let me be honest with you. If you're the right person, you'll be found. Yeah. If you're the right person, you're going to be found. So, the Bible says that he who finds a wife finds a good thing. It didn't say that the man is what makes the person good. The person is already good. It's already right material. Yeah. Every man is looking for a good thing. Now, what makes what makes your relationship work is the combination of your goodness and God's favor. Mm. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So as a man now, what improves your life, having married, is the fact that you found the good thing and then God gives you favor. The favor of God alone, alone is not enough to make your marriage work. You need to be the right person, mm. you know. You need to be the right person. He who finds, uh, finds a good thing. So what's that good thing? What's that good thing? The good thing is that you are, number one, a child of God. You have the capacity to receive from God, to share the things of God, the life of God is in you. You can express it. The other part of it is that you are someone who is um, who is resourceful, who is productive. Everybody may not necessarily have to go to the four walls of a university yeah. or a college of education or a technology school, whatever it is. But you must be someone who is at least intellectually sound. Mm. Mentally, you are not retarded. You are someone who is who engages your mind, whatever your hands find to do, 
you do with the whole of your heart. Let it be that when a man finds you, he has found something he has not been able to find elsewhere. Yeah. So improve yourself, work on yourself as a lady. And as a man, you know, you won't find a good thing if you're not a good thing. It's like someone who is trying to find darkness in darkness. You can't find it. You, for you to find something, the Bible says about a woman who lost her coin. Mm. And when she was going to find that coin, it says she, she turned on the light. In order to find anything in this kingdom, you need light. Yeah. When the Bible was talking about finding, it said a man who has found light, you need light to find. So the man must himself be a, a resourceful person. It's a person who knows how to ch- make a choice a person who has a good discretion and judgment of things. Because among what you're finding, you are going to find many duplication of it. Yeah, It's like a person who wants to go and buy a phone. You know, <laughs> a lot of people that have gone to go buy things before, they came back with tomato or they came back with, with, with soap because <laughs> they didn't know what they were looking for. If you don't know what you're looking for, how would you know when you recognize and everything when you find you it? look as if that is what you want to find. Everything buy. looks at like, everything looks like what you're looking for. So yeah. it begins with you. And how do you know what you're looking for if you don't even know who has what 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 the person who is going to give it to you? So you also as a man must have a relationship with God. So having said that, so a good thing is you working on yourself, being that right, being the person. Don't just sit down and wait for something to happen. Wait for one day that the man, the right man, will come on day. I'm going to. You have to keep get busy, work on yourself. Yeah. You know, if you mean if you need to improve yourself educationally, improve, while you're waiting, be working. While you're waiting, be busy. Don't just be learn, waiting. Learn something. Learn it straight. Yeah. Be skillful. Improve yourself in your in whatever it is you can do. Don't just sit down there and be waiting and saying I'm praying and waiting for God to happen. A man will find you in the place of goodness. Yeah. He finds you where you are doing good things where you are doing the right things. Okay, so that's it because of, um, you know, our time. I want, just wanted us to share our own experience with you. Yeah. You know, just a paraphrase of our own experience, practical experience now. Um, yeah. You want to say something? Yeah, it's very, very important as I will talk on behalf of the lady, the ladies generally. As a lady, sometimes you may not use a certificate to work. So I used to encourage people, especially ladies, to have and work. You can learn something. You skill. Can, yeah, it's skill. You can learn. As I am now, I can sew both male and female dresses <laughs> perfectly. So you can learn it. You can learn baking. You can even learn to make air. Some part of the world is a lot of money if you can make air for people. Some people can do makeups. It it depends. Just learn something. You just get busy. Yeah, learn you something. Know, that's just it. But the Bible says an idle mind is a devil's auction. Yeah. So your hand, if your hand is not busy intentionally, consciously, it's going to be busy unintentionally. The devil is going to hijack it. Mm. Your mind, if your mind is not busy doing something, thinking about something about your future, your destiny, it's going to be used for something else. So get busy. Yeah. Get busy. So for people who are still looking into relationship and um, thinking about marriage, you know, my advice to you is the fact that you must, like we said before, put God first. And you must realize, you know, <laughs> I determine exactly what you want to do. Do you want to marry or you want to do wedding? <laughs> that <Yeah>. is not, <laughs> that statement is very, very deep. <laughs> because a lot of people are just doing weddings, so, ceremonies so today. You have to identify what exactly you want ceremony. to do. Do you want to marry or you want to do wedding? So if you want to marry, it is not, it is not what people would say. It's not... <laughs> oh, like say, it's not um this it's not it doesn't come with ceremony it's a labor you have to do internally working mm. on yourself mm. okay now that's it and as you when you when you when you so when you've worked on yourself and let's say you found the person you want to get married to work together on yourselves get to know each other spend yeah. time more with yeah. each other not just in going for eateries and all that, spend time together discussing, praying. A lot of things that you guys together. even need to even discuss. Yeah. Discuss, yeah. sharing together, you know, rubbing minds together, understanding your differences and your, you know, uniqueness and all that. 
it's very, very important to know that. So you're not the same. Your wife or your husband, your, your friend, it's not the same as you. Nobody's ever going to be like you. So don't expect anybody to think like you, yeah. to behave like you. Yeah. The reason why you need somebody is because there's something about you that is not complete, that somebody else needs to come into complete. Or mm -hmm. the reason why you're going to another person's life is because you have something you can contribute and add into their life. So work on yourselves. And in terms of wedding, I want to say something very briefly on that. All right, sir. Wedding is not <clears throat> what people think it is. See, I've said it before. You don't need people for wedding. You need yourself your wife to be or your husband to be or your husband to be that's I say yourself your husband to be both of you mm -hmm. your man and the woman first factor you need a legal representative and a divine representative and if you have the parents still alive you need a family representative that's four categories of people yourself and your spouse to be um a legal representative, okay. divine. a divine representatives, representative, a family member, either your parents or other representative, you know, and maybe if you want to see people that you feel should be there. And what, what do I mean? If you want to do your marriage in the registry, all you need is yourself, your partner, the registrar, register and their staff, whoever is there, and your parents or your your friends, one or two of your friends, that could be less than 10 people. And that marriage will be as valid yeah. as a marriage that invited the whole of your country. It's as valid. The same document is going to be given to you. Both, both of them are both valid. Yeah. So nobody knows where you did your wedding if your marriage is successful. Mm. Nobody's going to ask you, What's, where did you do your wedding? It is not where you do your wedding or how much you spend on your wedding mm. that determines the success of your marriage. Mm. The success of your marriage is spending on both of you. Yeah. Yourselves. All the products. Yeah. The, yourselves the product you and your relationship with God. That's a factor. Yeah. See, this marriage started with myself and my wife and God. <clears throat> there was no child involved. There was no money. There mm. was no property. Yeah. Some of you are waiting to buy a car. You're waiting <laughs> to build a house. You're waiting to do. We didn't have all that. But all these things I've said to you now, God has blessed us with almost all of them. Mm. We have our children by the grace of God. Yeah. We have, you know, we change our cars. At least, you know, we are not homeless. So we have a place we're staying, mm -hmm. you know, and many more things like that. But yeah. it started with myself, my my wife, and God. That's all we had. Nothing more. There was no... I'm not saying you have to start that way. Most, even if you're at that level. Yeah. So some of you may be even be better than where we started from. But even if you're at our level where we started from, where there was nothing, I didn't nothing. even have a job. Nothing. All I had was a purpose, a vision, yeah. a plan, a desire to make it work and all that. You know, focus and all that's what she had. Determination, ready to show loyalty, sincerity, genuineness, and being authentic and all that. And that's it. That's all we had. That's the materials we used mm. and we brought together. She brought what she had. I brought her. We didn't bring money. She didn't bring any money. I didn't bring any money. We only brought our words. And that was what we traded by the grace of God. And that was what God blessed. And God started expanding us, expanding yeah. us, expanding us. And has handed those things I've talked about into our relationship. And I'm telling you, it's getting you know, we are moving and you know, God is helping us. So, that's in the legal side of things. So if you want, and again, after you've done the legal side, if you wanted to go to church, you don't need everybody. You can do it in a pastor's office. You can, your pastor, yourself, your wife, to be your parents, your friends, and the blessings of God comes upon that relationship. If the church has a legal document, let them give it to you. If they don't have a legal document, use the one you got from the registry. That's it. It doesn't have to involve millions of people. It doesn't have to involve thousands. It can be less than 10. And you can increase the number as, your, as you have the capacity. capacity yeah. So if you have capacity for 50, increase it to 50 people. Have a budget for 50 people. If your capacity is for just yourself and your wife, let it be. Maybe at some point in your relationship, maybe at some point in your future, you can then have opportunities to do other parties. Yeah. You will have been blessed. You that couldn't even do a wedding could even be doing your anniversary, one year yeah. anniversary, and you can call a big party. You can even you can rent the old you can you can book down the old streets. 
tell everybody on that street that this street nobody goes to work I'm going to pay your bills <laughs> you can pay everybody's bill you. make them give them a bank a public holiday on your streets in your nation everywhere because you have arrived yeah, yeah. you can but you must start from where you are don't let your expectations be too high and ladies let your expectations of your husband don't see you don't expect so much from a man who from a raw material you know you put so much pressure on the man you know he has to do this my family say you have to do this and all that is it the family that are marrying so so that's very very important very, very. so that's an area of wedding and you know and then start your life like that many other things that you know, we could talk about. I want this opportunity to say that if you have any comments, if you have any questions, if you have any you know, opinion, just put it down in the comment section and we'll, by the grace of God, you know, look into it and hopefully give you a response that is tailored for, towards your answer, your question. But now we're speaking generally, but if we have any specific questions, we'll be able to answer it specifically. Yeah. So so that's what, that's the most important thing. So your pastor blesses your marriage and that's it. So you know, then you start your life together. And that's how we started. That was, what, what did you bring? <laughs> I bring God. <laughs> and I met God. <laughs> well, that's it. So it's one plus one because, because one. No, no more than it. All right. So it's very, know. very important. Like uh, Tamia has said, it's very, very important. You don't need to kill yourself that you want to do this, kill 100 cows, kill 1 million cows, anything that you can afford, anything that you can afford. The most important thing, like as we have been saying before, God is the most important factor of every successful marriage. And apart from that, two of you, you are the next and you need to walk. It's a, it's, 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 it's a combination of two people coming together, two different ideologies, Two different the way they see background, things, everything. yes. Background. Some some people they they may even in some part of the country they can be from even different states, yeah, different, different countries, different, different tribe. Yeah. It depends. So, but because because they are coming together, you have to. Is 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 a joint effort. Is a joint work together so that the marriage can be able to work. And because two of you are coming together and you have already built the. You have, have a solid foundation, which is God. You will discover that you guys will just be moving from one greater glory to another level, to another level, to another level, because God is involved in that relationship, which is very, very important. And ladies, please, please, I, I can use everything to beg you, please marry the, the person that has God. Don't look at... Maybe that person is rich, that person is wealthy, that person has a lot of properties for you to say, yes, I do. It's, 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 a, it's a lifetime experience. When people sit down and they ask God, oh God, who should I get married to? <clears throat> and God tell them this, and you, okay, you move into it. You will discover that even your prayer point at all will just be a prayer of thanksgiving, appreciating God, because you will find us peace. But when you went to go and marry other wives, my sister, mm. you will turn your home to a prayer zone. Yeah. Instead of you to be praying for blessings, praying for uh, goodness, appreciating God from one greater glory to another, you'll be praying, Father, this husband, this man changing. <laughs> God, don't let him to be drinking. Don't let him to be smoking. Mm. Don't let him to be humanizing. And all those things. And is that what you want to be doing for the rest of your life? Mm. It's very, very important. As your Bible said, wash and pray. and pray. A lot of people are praying. They are not washing. No, and God is not a God is not the God of author of confession. And God loves his children. Okay. God does not want anybody to suffer at all. And all, all right. those sciences, a lot of people will have seen it, but they just ignore it. They, they ignore it, yeah. which is very, very important you to know, look into. So I think the last thing <laughs> I would want to talk about would be the area of fact that how do you comport yourself as a single person? You know, very, very important that you Bible says a man who is not able to control himself is will not be he's not able to control an army. You know, your relationship is not about you now, it's about the other person and other people. You must have self-control. How you but you know comport yourself personally, 
in the area of how you, you know, spend, how you eat, learn to spend wisely. Don't just say because you've got a good job, you want to live life, you want to rent an apartment that only married people, you know, live in as a lady. But then at the end of the day, you're not, you're, it's not even your house. When you're married, you know, you can't even stay in that house because maybe you have to move to another, another country, another state to join your husband. And as a, as a man, mm. you know, you may not even be able to bring your wife into that house. So I want to start by saying you need to be comp- be disciplined in your spend expenses. Learn to save. If you have an opportunity to uh, to save, save. You know, your appetite. Don't just be someone who eats anyhow, drinks anyhow. Um, put and put and uh, put put a a a, a lead on your appetite. Mm. You know, because whatever character you develop as a single person, it will only be amplified in marriage. If you're someone who doesn't learn to be, di- you know, who's not disciplined in your expenses, it will be difficult for you to manage your home because no matter how much you have, if you have a little now, it doesn't, it's not always enough. How is it going to be enough for you in marriage? So again, be disciplined in your, in your relation, sexual relationship. That's a very, very important fact. You don't, you don't, you don't sleep with the person you love. Mm-hmm. You sleep with the person you're married to. That's a fact. That's one word you must never forget. Mm. It doesn't matter your attraction you have towards anybody. It's not a right. It's not a license to have sex with them. Sex is only permitted in the confines of marriage after you have said yes to the man and to the lady. That's only when, that's the only time you have the license and the right to have engaged in sex. Mm. I'm emphasizing on that because of the damages and the damage that sex does to relationships. And one of the things I've discovered over the years, I mean, by the grace of God, I've been talking about this issue of relationship for years, more than a decade, more than, I mean, many, many years now. Yeah. And it has always been consistent, the fact that when sex is introduced into a relationship, no matter how authentic that relationship is from the start, it will <laughs> always deteriorate. The end of that relationship starts from the day sex is involved before marriage. Mm -hmm. So avoid it. Don't be under any pressure to, you know, sleep with a man or with a lady because at the end of the day, you're not married. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be living together for the rest of your life. And, you know, you can have it as much as you want it. But again, that's a blessing in marriage. But outside of marriage, it brings a lot of guilt, distrust, you know, it brings a lot of shame, a lot of, it opens the door for demonic and satanic attacks. Mm. And you don't want to start your marriage with battles. Mm. You know, some people already starting their marriage with battles. There's lack of understanding, lack of trust, lack of satisfaction, lack of, and you must avoid it as much as possible. You know, it's a sin against God. And again, it's not even healthy for your relationship. It takes the focus away from you and it places it on your body. You know, it's the man doesn't even, he's not even interested in knowing you anymore. He just wants to have, because once you can, Bible says, do not wake up love. You know, don't wake it up. When it's in the book of Proverbs, I don't know where that passage is, you know, mm-hmm. if you can let me find it. But that's in somewhere in Songs of Solomon. Yeah, Songs of Solomon. Don't wake up love. Let it be sleeping. If you wake it up, you won't be able to put it back to sleep. So when you start feeding a man sexually or a lady sexually, you know, the truth is that, <laughs> it's not going to end. And another thing I've discovered, you know, over the years of speaking about this relation is that anybody who sleeps with you before marriage will sleep with somebody else after marriage. Even though they may say to you that I will give myself, they will still sleep with somebody yeah, else after Song marriage. Of Song of Solomon chapter what? Eight verse four. What does it say? I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that ye stir not up or no, awake my love on say please. Don't wake up love. Let love sleep. So don't focus on your emotions, your, 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 your relationship. Focus on yourselves, intellectual, your your, yeah. your mind, your values, your strengths, and all that. And that's what that's what makes that relationship thrive. Your visions. So your visions, discuss it, discuss it together. And that's exactly what you need. So if you do all these things and then you, you know, you you know follow the principles that God because God will 
you know, give you specific instructions that are going to match your own relationship. If you do them, I'm telling you, there is no limit to what God can do in your home. Mm -hmm. And a good marriage is a possibility. Don't be discouraged by the testimonies you are seeing, what you're hearing. Oh, they said this person married for 30 something years, it's divorced. Forget about that. You hear many things, many wrong things. You're going to hear the ones that have been there for 40 years, 50 years, and they've been there. They never divorced. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at both sides of the coin. What's making one divorce? What's making the other not divorce? Go and check it very well. One has a right foundation. One has a faulty foundation. The Bible was clear about that from the start, that there will always be an opportunity for both of them to rise. But what will bring the fall of one will bring the rising of the other. Yeah. Very, very important. All right. There are still a lot of things to be discussed. And I can assure you, a lot of episodes are coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so I want you to go to YouTube, Love for Square Church, Manchester. Manchester. Click on the subscription button so that you'll be notified. As, as we have rightly said, there are different episodes on this special and different event. guests are coming to different discuss guests are coming different topics and different side different shades of it so don't you don't want to miss it yeah it's going to be an amazing time so, all right so there's so much we could have said but you know we're not going to be able to exhaust what we've experienced in 10 years in one hour <laughs> but i'm sure you've been blessed and we believe that you got something out of this yeah. so um we again i mean ask that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Love Four Square Church, Love yeah. Four Square Church, Manchester. And there you find more of these episodes coming up. It's a build up to our 10th year anniversary. We just want to use this opportunity to bless marriages and strengthen homes. Um, again, so the bad news we're hearing you know, about different relationships. Relationship works, yeah. you know. I love my wife and I've not stopped loving her. <laughs> I love my husband. So it's not changed. Us. Nothing has changed in 10 years. Yeah. But there are those who started it. And I just had about one yesterday, you know, very popular artist. And then after three years, they're already on Facebook or social media, lambasting themselves and calling it off. You know, it doesn't have to end that way. Mm. And that's why we're sharing these things with you. And yeah. again, don't forget, if you have tried foolishness, and it has not worked. So why don't you give wisdom a chance? Yeah. This is the wisdom of God. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll just ask my wife to bless you and pray for you until we meet again. Our Father and our God, once again, we say thank you. Thank you, ancient of this, for this first session of this wonderful program. Thank you, Lord. And today, O oh Lord, we thank you for everything. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for as many people that are watching us right now or they are still going to watch us later on we pray oh lord jesus that the peace of god that passes all understanding will rest upon your lives Amen. will rest upon your homes Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. to as many marriages that are having any form of challenges having any form of difficulties at the edge of giving up we pray lord jesus that the strength of god will show up for you in Amen. the name of jesus christ Amen. that the peace eyes of understanding will be open, will be enlightened in the Amen. name of Jesus. And you will receive Amen. the right knowledge, the right knowledge, the right Amen. knowledge in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Thank you, faithful Father. Thank you, Thank you Holy Spirit of the living God. You Amen. are blessed in the name of Jesus. The Lord will order your steps to make the right choices, to make the right decision in the name of Jesus, in line Amen. with the will of God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As many people that have not received Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. That is where the foundation lies. We pray, Lord Jesus, that the Spirit of God will minister to you, will touch you in mm. the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Thank you, Father. That same you. grace will keep you to the hand in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, faithful Father. Thank, Thank you, Lord. blessed Redeemer. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. All right. So thank you very much. Nice to have you join us and hopefully see you again soon. Bye, God God's bless God. you. Um, your relationship is blessed. Amen. And if you've not gone into anyone yet, 
um, expect the blessings of God in that relationship because you're part of this. God bless you. Amen. We'll see you again soon. <laughs> Shalom. <laughs> Bye. God bless. Bye. See ya.